I V M. Welcome to Absolutely Right, the first graphology-based podcast show in India. I am your host Aditi Surana. I am a graphologist and a high-performance coach. What is graphology, you ask? It is a study of graphs created by your handwriting strokes. In simple words, it's handwriting and signature analysis to know your personality at a deeper level. Before we talk about why do people misunderstand you, let's explore this concept. When you feel misunderstood, you feel that a friend, colleague, or anyone for that matter didn't understand you correctly. They are overreacting to your comment or being upset unnecessarily, blowing it out of proportion, or even being unfair in blaming you for something that you haven't done. If one person has done it, or if it happens once in a blue moon, then let's drop this conversation right here. But if random people have misinterpreted your words and action, or loved ones, close people have labeled you in an incorrect way over and over again, then there might be a pattern. And as shocking as it may sound, you might be responsible for it. Wait, do not pick up a gun and shoot down this point. I'm not saying that you're wrong in feeling misunderstood. I'm saying that you might be giving mixed signals and confusing ideas to others. For example, some people, when they look at me, they think I'm South Indian. But then they get confused when I refer to my mother as I, which is clearly Maharashtra. Then they read my surname, which is Marwadi Surana, and they wonder which box to put me in. Let me accept I am giving mixed signals. I am a half Telugu, half Maharashtrian child with a Marwadi surname. I can't blame them for nothing. The question is, are you giving mixed signals? Are you portraying your personality to be someone that you're not? just because you want to be more liked, accepted, loved, or even included. Graphologically speaking, I can find this out in your handwriting and especially your signature in moments. Get a notepad, write two, three lines in your natural handwriting style, and then write your bank signature next to it. Do you see any difference between the way you write and the way you sign? Is your signature really big? Or is your signature smaller than your writing style? Is it moving to the right more? Is it written in an illegible manner? Is there any difference? If this is slightly confusing and if you want proper instructions to create a handwriting sample and also to look at the actual difference between signature and handwriting, then visit aditisurana.com slash podcast. You can look for episode number 78. We have created a PDF document for your clarity. So coming back to the difference between your handwriting and signature. Handwriting describes your real personality, whereas signature reveals your public image. In Carl Jung's terms, we can call it persona. Let's make it simple. Have you noticed your behavior changing when you step out of your house? Your tone of voice, mannerism, choice of words. Everything becomes different and slightly more formal. Have you wondered why? Some degree of variation is natural and also part of our social upbringing. But people feel misunderstood when the gap is drastic in their public and personal behavior, in their handwriting and in their signature. Imagine you own a restaurant that serves best Indian thali. But you also have a huge fancy board outside that reads Mamiya. In this situation, with or without your knowledge, you are attracting wrong people. Italian food lovers are obviously upset with you and you feel, why am I being misunderstood in spite of serving the best quality Indian food? What a cash 22 situation. Both of you do not know what's going on here. Carl Jung, the father of modern analytical psychology, coined the term persona. He said, persona is a kind of a mask created by our minds, knowingly or unknowingly, to create, on one hand, a definite impression upon others, and on the other, to conceal the true nature of our personality. Part of my work is to design graphologically correct signatures. I have tested this gap between true personality and persona over and over again. Instead of only changing the signatures to add the underline or two dots and things like that, I spend a lot of time understanding what the person is trying to say with this different, unnatural mask. Why did he create these distinct characteristics in his writing in the first place? What purpose is this mask serving for him? In my research, I found four important reasons why you might be feeling misunderstood all the time. Point number one, are you fearful of being judged? When you're uncomfortable being judged for who you truly are, you naturally create barriers. You project only the acceptable parts 
and conceal those parts which may invite judgment, criticism, even rejection. Once a man and his wife were walking with their donkey from one village to the other. Someone said, what a stupid man. Why is he not sitting on the donkey? So he did. Someone else said, how rude. His wife is walking and this person is sitting comfortably. So he got off and asked his wife to sit. Then he heard, why can't they both sit on the donkey? How funny. So he climbed up with his wife. Then someone else said, oh my God, look at the poor donkey. These people are shameless. In short, it is impossible to live without being judged by someone or the other. Point number two, do you struggle to trust others? The concept of security and trust is created at an early stage of your formative years. Like the stock market traders say, panic is stronger than greed. Similarly, fear is strong driving force that keeps you vigilant throughout your adult life. If you have trust issues, then your mind finds faults and tries to create gaps in every relationship. Point number three, are you afraid of intimacy? If you couldn't trust the adults who raised you, intimacy becomes a challenge. With a new dating culture app, it is easier to stay at an easygoing exploratory stage with multiple people instead of walking through multiple levels of intimacy with one person. Unknowingly, you're holding a board that reads, I love you, but I won't let you close. Point number four, are you waiting to be understood? People hope that if someone else totally understands them, then they will be able to understand themselves. The question is, are you codependent? Do you seek approval and validation from others to a point that you can lose the sight of who you are? Do you agree to things that you actually don't believe in just to be polite and be accepted? This all result in people having entirely wrong idea of who you truly are of your authentic self. Lastly, the bonus point. Do you communicate effectively? Many people expect others to understand them without seeking internal clarity. More than 70% communication is non-verbal. And that's why most people constantly contradict with themselves. They behave in the manner with their expressions or body language that does not match what they're actually trying to say. If you have understood these points that I mentioned today, then you can actually help a friend, a colleague or anyone who feel misunderstood. You can look at their handwriting and signature and can detect the gap. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Absolutely Right. Do share your thoughts and questions with me on my Instagram handle at Aditi Surana. And if you're intrigued by the conversation of graphology, then come join my graphology masterclass. It is not a professional training, but it is designed for anyone who would like to know himself or herself at a deeper level. It's a great way to detect your anxiety patterns, your trigger and your actual personality. The next batches will start on 5th of December and 9th of Jan. All the details are mentioned on my website, aditisurana.com. And before I say goodbye, if you like this podcast, then don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IBM network. You can listen to us on the IBM podcast app or ibmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on our social media. We are at IBM podcast on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Let's connect on Wednesday. Till then, happy writing. I hope you enjoyed that show. If you aren't following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Another fun week in the books last week, and I think you guys should definitely check out some of the shows that we did. So first, let me tell you about Cock and Bull. We did two Cock and Bulls on Cyrus Says last week, which is I don't think we've ever done before. But there was just so much to talk about, and it was fun. Uh, the first one was just on Thrish, Myself, and Cyrus. The second one we had Abhijit Ganguly on, and that was a great episode. Do check that out. Check out Know Your Kanun as well. It's been a while since I spoke about that show, but Umber's been doing a great job on it. This week, he spoke to Naina Sharma, a Canadian lawyer, about the ways that you do business in Canada and the challenges that that presents. Definitely very interesting stuff. Do check that out. The guys at Nan Curry are doing some really, really fun stuff. Do check out their latest episode. They talk about roti, the simple bread, but it's got some complications to it. Let them tell you about what they are. Do check that out. Also, do definitely check out The Wire Talks with Siddharth Bhatia. He's been killing it, man. It's just a new show, but what great conversations. This week, he had Siddharth Singh on to talk about pollution. Do check that out. And you know what, guys? The best news of all, Simplified, is back They've been back for a few weeks and I haven't called them out before, but remember that they're back and do check them out. This week, they talk about does censorship make sense? Knowing the guys, I think I know the answer to that, but you should go check that out. And with that, I hope to see you again next week. 
Hi, my name is Anupam Gupta. I'm B50 on Twitter. I am the host of Paisa Paisa, a show that talks money. On my show, I speak to experts from every field of money and finance, from stock markets, equities, debt funds, credit cards, life insurance, every possible area of money and finance that you can think of. We even did an episode on cryptocurrency. I've got fantastic guests from mutual funds to personal finance experts everywhere. Robo advisory, startups, just name it, we've got it. At Pesa Pesa, we help you make smart decisions about money. You work hard for money. Now make your money work hard for you. New episodes out every Monday and you can listen to my show on the IVM podcast app or any other podcasting app that you have.